Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where a dumb neighbor learns the dangers of tree law. Our next Reddit post is from Tenebrous Sunshine. So for background, my husband is pretty handy. Prior to COVID, he had flipped several houses as a fun side gig. It's what he loves to do, and he became very familiar with a ton of city codes. During COVID, it seemed that everyone was suddenly buying houses to flip out of boredom and prices skyrocketed, so he put that hobby on hold. Instead, he started doing household repairs and upgrades, building fences, etc. around the neighborhood as well. To get a better understanding of the neighborhood HOA bylaws and whatnot, he joined the HOA Architectural Committee. Through that, he learned all there was to know about what was allowed and what wasn't, how the process worked, how to work around things, etc. Long story short, my husband became very knowledgeable in what to do and not do, and various processes with the neighborhood and the city. Our next door neighbor decided they were going to start landscaping their backyard. And I guess they planned to make their backyard look as similar to ours as possible. Problem was, despite us being neighbors, our land was actually quite different. For one, behind our house was a bunch of brush and pine trees, maybe three to four feet from the lake that's at the back of the house. We didn't have to do a whole lot to clear the area, but the brush on their property was about one third of their yard, probably like 10 feet from the water. Also, the way the houses on our street are, the land naturally made kind of like a valley, where the house to our right is at the top of the valley, we're in the middle, and the next two houses are at the bottom before it very quickly rises again. The first thing the neighbors did was cut down all the trees in their backyard. They were not small trees either, but four story tall trees or more. My husband and neighbor were talking about the backyard plans when my husband casually mentioned that he was surprised the city gave him permission to cut down so many trees. In our city, you had to have an arborist give permission to cut down any trees that were certain feet tall. The neighbor first said that it wasn't the city's business what he did with his backyard, then told my husband to mind his own business. Okay, fair enough. Then, the neighbors started putting up a retaining wall to bring it up to level with our property, which would have been about 7 to 8 feet tall. Basically, they were just stacking up a bunch of cinder blocks. My husband uncomfortably asked if their landscapers had ever done a retaining wall like that, and if the city approved it. According to city laws, if a retaining wall is over 5 feet tall, you need a structural engineer to come out. The neighbor again said that it wasn't any of the city's business what he did to his yard and for my husband to mind his own business. While the neighbors were filling up their backyard to bring theirs level to ours, the landscapers are dumping all the dirt, gravel, and sand in the street, blocking a little over half the road. Several of the neighbors who had trucks would just hop the curb, but other neighbors with smaller cars were mad. Before my husband could ask if they could just put the dirt in their driveway instead of on the road, the neighbor went off on my husband and told him to F right off. Well, okay then. My husband let them continue working and didn't say a word as they started constructing a 10 foot tall fence, which was against HOA regulations because they couldn't be taller than 6 feet. Between them starting construction 6 days a week before 7am and them blocking the road, I guess someone had enough. Next thing you know, city officials are out there putting a big sign in the yard saying that all construction was to be halted until further notice. It wasn't us, but my husband found out through the architectural committee that someone had complained about the noise and the road blockage to the HOA, who came out to investigate, saw everything they'd done, and then reported them to the city. They got a hefty fine for every tree stump the city official found. The structural engineer said the retaining wall wasn't sound and it had to be redone, and it had to have regular inspections during its build. The HOA also told them that not only did they have to take down their 10 foot tall fins, but since they didn't get prior approval and because it wasn't an approved design, the HOA also hit them with a hefty fine. Initially, the neighbor came after us for tattling, but we told him that it wasn't us, as nothing they did affected us in any way. My husband then said that he did try to warn them this would happen, but the neighbor told him to F off and mind his own business, which he did. They had to shut down for three weeks while I guess they got things sorted out with the city and the HOA. Their backyard is still not finished. 
Yo, this idiot neighbor is angry at OP's husband because he thinks that OP's husband ratted him out. When really, if OP's husband had ratted him out, then he would have been doing him a favor because he would have saved the neighbor probably tens of thousands of dollars. Some people are just unbelievably stupid. Our next Reddit post is from Sparks. A few years ago, I worked at a janky two-bit company. The boss thought that he was Billy Big Bollocks and God's gift simultaneously. He had such a big head, I'm surprised he could get through doorways. He used to drink beer at his desk for lunch and would often arrive at work late. He was also an insufferable muscle bro and walked around as if carrying rolls of carpet under each arm. Prick. A few months into my time there, the company starts winning large orders, so he asked me to set up a small-scale production line to increase capacity, and he tells me a new hire will be situated there. I design it, set it up, test everything works, and I'm feeling a sense of pride with what I've accomplished. It works like a dream. I was confident it would work really well for the new hire. Because I'm an engineer by trade, everything was perfect, and only I knew how to fix the broken stuff. Nobody else asked me how the thing worked before making some very stupid decisions. A while later, there was an issue. The boss couldn't hire anyone willing to accept such terrible pay and boring work. So Billy Big Bollocks had the bright idea to demote me and make me governor of my creation. <laughs> no way, not for 9,000 pounds a year less than what I'm making now. I immediately started job hunting and told him that if he's really going to demote me, then consider this my final day. He panics because he committed the company to a 1 million pound order due for shipping in three days. During his alcohol-fueled panic, he tells me to write up a highly detailed technical manual and processes for my replacements. Piss off, I can't do that in one day. He also didn't specify what they should contain, and considering that I had no help from him during this project, only complaints, I thought, F it. So sure, he got his manuals. I created Word documents with convincing titles like Technical Manual, Product Version 2.0, and How to Do This One Precise Task. Inside the documents were, for example, the surprised Pikachu face meme and bubbles from Trailer Park Boys looking lost. Then below those pictures, just one line of text reading, this manual contains all the information I could find or was given. The file sizes would also indicate that a lot of text was contained within because of the images. Therefore, at face value, they looked legitimate. I saved them to my laptop in an equally legitimate looking folder that afternoon. Early the next morning, I came to work to collect my belongings and do some handovers, and I found that my laptop had vanished. I said goodbye to my colleagues and looked over to see the boss looking incensed with a beer in one hand. He was so angry, he didn't even look up from his desk. A friend told me later that the company missed the production deadline despite him working 12-hour days to try to catch up. Apparently, the client was extremely pissed off. Don't screw over good people, prick. Man, how stupid you have to be to miss out on a 1 million pound order because you're too cheap to pay someone 9,000 pounds. Our next Reddit post is from Lazy Spud. I worked at Sears while in college. I was in the warehouse, and throughout the day, we would have to bring large items out for customers. We also had an outlet store, so we often had to bring out unboxed appliances. One day, a customer came in with a receipt for a fridge that he bought from the outlet store, so I grab it and bring it out. Turns out he has a pickup with a very tall canopy over the back, and a bed that was absolutely full of construction debris. All that junk in the bed of his truck was level with the top of the pickup bed. But still, the canopy was pretty tall and it would accommodate most of the fridge by laying it on its back. Anyway, we shoved the fridge into his truck, but it didn't quite fit far enough into the bed of his truck to close the back doors. So I ran and grabbed some nylon twine to tie the two door handles together to keep it from flying out. At this point, the customer starts giving me flack for using weak twine that will break immediately. I pointed out that the twine we use is extremely strong and it would definitely not break. The customer started rifling around in the back of his truck and pulled out 10 feet of coaxial cable, as in the cable you use to plug in cable TV. Here, now this is strong, he told me. I couldn't help looking at him like he was insane. 
You might be able to make a case that coax cable is somewhat strong, but there's no way you'd be able to tie it together to secure it. It would clearly unravel almost instantly. I tactfully tried to explain this to him, but he just got madder and madder. At this point, I began to realize that I better get a witness to this. So I called loss prevention, aka security, and they came down and together we explained to him that we can't guarantee that his jury-rigged BS would properly secure his load. And if something happens, we would not be liable. Then the loss prevention guy took some Polaroid photos of his completely tied up refrigerator. Fast forward 15 minutes later. The guy is back in our parking lot, but there's no fridge in the back of his truck. He is steaming effing mad. He screams that he wants to see the store manager. So I call the manager, but I also call the loss prevention guy, who came a little bit later. So apparently, he drove down the road about a quarter of a mile, then he turned right to get onto the freeway entrance ramp, at which point the back doors flew open and the fridge flew out. Apparently, the fridge was currently sitting in three places on the side of the freeway entrance. The guy screamed at the store manager, claiming I completely messed up loading his car and he wants a new fridge. At this point, the loss prevention guy showed up and explained to the manager, it's not quite the way he was saying it. OP offered to secure the load tightly with our approved super strong twine, but the customer insisted that he use coaxial cable instead. OP made it clear that he felt this would not secure the fridge, and in fact called us up to document the situation. And here's the photos of what it looked like and what the customer said that he approved. <laughs> My manager looked at the photo, rolled his eyes, and told the customer, I'm sorry sir, this is completely on you, and then the manager walked away. I was stunned! Honestly, Sears would take anything back or refund anything as long as you pushed the tiniest bit. But I guess this situation was so clear cut to the manager that he wasn't going to give an inch. The guy sputtered that he was going to sue us and in the distance, without even turning around, the manager just says, It's always your prerogative to throw away even more of your money. <laughs> the guy never sued. I genuinely can't tell if this guy has more stupidity to try to tie down a fridge with a coax cable or more audacity for doing that and then coming back to complain and demand a new fridge. Our next Reddit post is from I Need a Tiny Llama. My husband is a very skilled outdoor tech for a big communications corporation. He's been there for 34 years. He was doing some online safety training in the office. A 20-something engineer who works inside named Skippy told him to go mop the bathroom floor. My husband refused, stating that it wasn't covered under his job title. Skippy begged to differ, said the floor was muddy from the outside pig's boots, and since he's management, he can order people to do anything, which isn't even true. My husband got an idea and said, okay, I'll do it. He went into the mechanic area, grabbed the power washer, put in lots of cleaner, and hosed the bathroom down, ceiling to floor, including the paper towels, toilet paper, magazines, and the chair they stored in there. My husband went back to his online courses. Skippy went to the restroom and came howling at my husband about soap being everywhere, that it was a huge mess, blah blah blah. My husband replied, anything worth doing is worth doing right. If it's not cleaned enough, he'd be happy to put degreaser into the power washer and clean it again. Skippy now has to answer to his manager two levels above him, and he's refusing to speak to my husband. That was r slash malicious compliance, and if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.